and they take me to the hospital. I was very fortunate to get a nurse or to get a correctional officer with me that was very kind to me. The emergency room checks me out in Little Rock. They say, yes, you're six centimeters dilated. We have to get you upstairs. I go upstairs. My daughter was born at 3 p.m. The nurses during my labor were condescending, were mean, were, they didn't talk to me. They talked to the correctional officer that was by my shoulder. They wouldn't talk to me directly at all. Can she have this? Can she have that? Is she doing that? Is she okay? Is the baby going here? No one asked me anything. So finally, when my daughter was born, I had told myself that if I don't look at her, I won't love her. And if you just take her away, then I'll be okay. This is absolutely breaking my heart. And that's just I'm wrong. Her medical I mean, team she's for the patient. I not understand treating that her she as a human. The law You're still a human, a prisoner, even in prison. But... I'm mad at her about feeling that you're not from the wanted. prison for not getting just her adequate feeling care like a third at meal. a time that it should have been it's done. Like, hello, this is she's laying. She came out. So I saw standing like, a right glimpse of her and there. I just looked this way and I, I wanted them to take the her away because I knew I had to say goodbye. And I thought if I just rip the band-aid, I'll be okay. So I, I turned to this correctional officer. She's on my right side and I'm crying and I just don't want to look at this baby. She said, girl, you better look at that baby. And I did, and oh my god, she's so beautiful, and she was so little. She was uh, six pounds, nine ounces, and I was so happy. I immediately fell in love with this baby. This, this beautiful little baby was mine. I'm really thankful that she at least had a CEO there who treated her as a human. This is hard for me to watch because we don't get a lot of training on this in medical school and residency, and I've had some patients that have been prisoners, and I think that I treated them appropriately, and I would hope that I would never be condescending to a patient because of their life situation, but it's really making me take more note of that, and I think that this is something that I talk about a lot on the internet, is how listening to people's stories has been very helpful to me in making sure that I understand how my bedside manner is interpreted and how my actions are um, coming across to patients. And so this is actually really helpful to me in that. And I hope that other people in the medical field will watch this and take note of it because exactly. you don't stop being a human just because you make bad decisions. You're still a person. And she's really making it clear how hard that is when your medical team isn't treating you well. Came in very quickly and she noticed that my leg was not chained to the bed and she gasped and said, I can't believe your leg isn't chained to the bed. Oh my God, I have to put that on your leg. And I kind of jerked my leg and I was like, why? Like, I'm not going anywhere. I can barely walk. She said, it's policy. Important. Four hours after I gave birth to my first child, I was chained to a bed. The correctional officer told me I was not allowed to get out of the bed unless I had to go to the bathroom. Doctors came in and said um, she needs to walk around so that she can heal herself, so that she can be okay. The correctional officer looked at that doctor exactly. and said, per prison policy, she is not to get out of this bed. That is unacceptable. Again, I keep repeating this, but you retain the right to adequate healthcare, even when you are a prisoner. Exceptions are made to shackling during labor and delivery, and it sounds like that that was followed in her case, but there are some states that don't even require that. I have had to ask a CEO to take a patient out of shackles so that I could do an appropriate exam on them in the past, and they were very resistant. So I think it's really important that medical people watching this know that a patient's rights to have an adequate exam and be able to adequately care for themselves, whether it's labor and delivery or an emergency situation in the ER, if you need their shackles off to do a good exam, to help them you know, get up and move around, to keep them from getting a blood clot in pregnancy or after delivery or whatever it is, they have that right. And you as a medical provider can ask their shackles to be removed for this. This patient is not getting adequate care for themselves and you can advocate for them. Again, that's not a specific rule in every state, but most states do have a law that says if it's preventing adequate care in a medical situation, they can be removed. I was kind of afraid to even ask to go to the bathroom, honestly. I mean, it was so hard. So one of the doctors came in to check on me after probably 10 hours had gone by at this point. And she said, I'm gonna give you a uh, Percocet and I'm gonna give you something else, I guess for, so I didn't get an infection or whatever, some other medication. And I said, Percocet? 
no thank you. Um, give me like ibuprofen and some really strong coffee because I only have 24 hours and I just want to look at her. That doctor, whoever she is, like if she ever sees this, I don't know why she would, but if she ever sees this, thank you so much. But she looked at me and said, I think you need another 24 hours. I mean, she could just see it in my heart. I had to hold my daughter Micah for 48 hours, but those 48 hours went by so fast. Um, okay, I'm gonna cry. Um, it's not uncommon for first time moms to be kept in the hospital for 48 hours. And I'm glad that she needed that and they made that decision for her. Um, <laughs> Jessica, if you ever see this, I wasn't your doctor, but maybe your doctor follows me and will happen to see it. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to cry, that is all. I knew I was gonna have to say goodbye, but I didn't want to. I really didn't want to. So, two correctional officers came in. I'd never seen them before. Um, they were big, very large individuals, and they said, Kent, it's time. I, um, I didn't respond the way that I should have because I was so scared. I didn't want to leave this child. I had like mama bear like came out and I said, no, I'm holding Micah. And they're like, Kent, don't do anything stupid. Put that baby down. You do not want to hurt her. And I said, you're gonna have to pry her out of my dead hands. I was so upset, you guys. I did not want to put this baby down and walk her walk away from her no one told me where she was going who she would be with if she'd be okay if i'd be able to see her maybe talk to her on the phone like you know baby talk but like say something i didn't know if i was gonna see see her ever again finally i kind of came to my senses and i put her down the little bassinet the hospitals give you and i'm holding onto the edge of the bassinet and i said i'll be back for you my gosh, this is very emotional. <laughs> I have to just stop for a second. Um, you know, I'm watching this now with my mom eyes a little bit, and I can't imagine how hard that was. No matter what your history is, where you came from, what you've done, being forced to give your baby to someone else two days after it's born is not something that most people would handle very well. So I think her describing this as very normal reaction and most people watching probably agree that this seems like a very normal reaction, but it's heartbreaking and it's heartbreaking to hear her retell it. And I'm sure it is hard for her to think about. Now I'm holding onto the bassinet, right? Cops grabbed me and it kind of pushed the bassinet a little bit. They cuffed me and threw me really hard into a wheelchair and they started wheeling me out really quickly just to get me into the security van so that I can't escape, I guess. I don't know. They didn't know where my head was at. They have a job to do. I get it. I get back to the prison in the infirmary. They're asking me questions to make sure I'm okay to go back to general population. I couldn't talk. Um, I probably have PTSD because of that, but they kept me in the infirmary for a couple of weeks because I was not okay. I wanted to end my life, but that wasn't something I was going to share with them because when you tell someone in prison that you want to end your life, they strip you naked, put you in a pickle suit, and throw you in segregation in a dark, horrible cell, and they watch you for 72 hours. I was not willing to deal with that. I didn't tell anyone that. I wouldn't speak at all. She sounds like she's having a very strong adjustment stress reaction to this situation, and honestly, I, I mean, I think what else would you expect? Of course, that's how someone will react in this situation. It's traumatic. It's extremely traumatic. And she's very rational about it. You know, she said, they didn't know where my head was at. They had to take me away. But at the same time, she couldn't physically leave. And that probably is really mm. common that you have to be physically removed instead of walking out on your own volition in that situation. So I don't know. I don't know, guys. I keep trying to come up with like medical additions here, but all I can say is I'm having the same emotions that you're having. This is hard to watch. And there are parts of it where I definitely feel like we have devalued her as a exactly. human and not given her adequate access to medical care, which is a problem. And then there are parts of it where I'm like, yeah, I don't know how you could do that any different, but it's all sad even, even then. Finally, I was cleared to go back to general population. Immediately everyone's in my face. 
oh my god, New York, are you okay? What happened? Is there is the baby okay? Blah, blah, blah. And I went right to my rack, didn't say a word to them, and I laid down on my bunk. I was not given anything for the milk in my breast. I was told I had to wrap ace bandages around my, on my breast, and I had to have someone else help me with that and keep them really tight so the milk went away. The pain was excruciating. It hurts so bad. Yes, engorgement is incredibly painful. And in addition to the ACE bandages, although there's not a lot we can exactly. do to just stop milk production, it is of my opinion. And, and on top of that, with uh, if she had gone to segregation, that could play even harder on her mind. What I mean by that is isolation is not good for the human brain but i just like segregation probably would have made things 10 times worse for her you know she just got her baby taken away and that hurts because you know she's a young first time mom and she doesn't want to feel that she failed her child but you know, having your child taken away, I can see if you begin to think, this is what I get for my life situation, which is just heartbreaking. Jessica, I feel you, even though I have never been in your situation, but you're a strong woman. Just and probably that. ACOGS, because this is part of medical care, that she should have had access to some way pump her breasts just to be comfortable. Whether she should be able to pump and save the milk and give it to the baby, that is completely up for debate. I don't wanna get into that, but she definitely should have been able to pump for comfort because getting engorged and remaining engorged absolutely increases her risk of getting an infection and it's extremely painful. So that is something else that, this is kind of making me wanna just go advocate for prison reform for people who are pregnant. Because I was left in a bed for 48 hours and then again- My personal opinion on that is, I think she should be able to pump her milk because it's still the nutrients that the baby needs. And just because she's in prison does not mean that she has to be devalued so much as you're not valuable enough to your own child. She went through this pregnancy. This is her kid. And just personally, I think that prison moms should be able to still either breastfeed their child or give them milk. I believe I saw somewhere that in other countries, that's actually what they're allowed to do. They are allowed to have their child with them. Um, but yeah, gorging, that just, uh, that hurts. <laughs> that sounds like that hurts so bad. And I know it does. Well, I don't know, but she said it does. So I'll take her word for it. The infirmary, I... I was not okay, like I couldn't walk properly. I was limping because one side of my back hurt and the other side was okay. The epidural was done incorrectly. I couldn't walk properly because of that. Also during labor, because the epidural was done incorrectly, I could feel everything on one side, not the other. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's because I wasn't holding still or they didn't put it in right, but it was a very painful process in the healing phase. So yeah, I can answer that. It's not usually that it's done incorrectly. It can be if someone is moving a lot because they're in pain, but a lot of times this is just the epidural is not always consistent in the way it's taken up by your body structure. It's more likely to just have to do with somebody's anatomy than it is their actions or the actions of the person who placed the epidural. This should wear off. It's not something that should be permanent. It doesn't happen often, but it can happen with, with an epidural. I didn't see my daughter again until she was mm -hmm. six months old. I didn't know what she looked like. I didn't know if she was okay. I didn't know where she was. I didn't know what she was doing. The foster family did try to send me a ton of pictures, but the prison kept sending them back. They didn't know the rules. And in that prison, you can only get five pictures at a time. You can also only keep five pictures in your your property at all times. They will get taken away from you. You will go to segregation if you have more than five pictures. I finally get out and Micah has been in DHS custody for over a year. I worked a DHS case for another year and I did hair follicle tests, drug and alcohol counseling, therapy. I did parenting classes. I visited my daughter every single weekend. She was placed four hours away from me. I had no money, no car, no shoes. I was living in a halfway house and I still had to find a way to make it work. But I did it. 
It was really hard, but I overcame all of those things. I now have full custody of my daughter and I'm so proud of myself, you guys. And I want to share that with you because no mistake is too great to not recover and bounce back. I'm living proof that sobriety is possible. It is not a death sentence. No mistake is too great to not recover and bounce back. I'm proud of you too, Jessica. <laughs> I didn't expect Victory. to be very emotional there in this. You are doing a great service by sharing your story. So thank you. Thank you for being here today. If you're new and you'd like to subscribe, we would love to have you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me in the comments. Be kind and I will see you next Monday. So that was the video. Thank you, Jessica and Mama Jones for creating this video. It was very interesting to see the OBGYN medical side to the story and then it was just absolutely heartbreaking to hear Jessica retell this story and I understand that she is starting to or has started to talk to her daughter about being born in prison so good for her but yeah just this video went from me wanting to absolutely bawl my eyes out to wanting <laughs> to absolutely scream in anger, especially the shackles part. That I don't like the idea of anybody in shackles, even a normal prisoner. But the fact that they made a big deal over her not being chained to the bed after she gave birth, it's like, really? Where, honestly, do you think she's going to go? I understand it's protocol. Um, some of you are probably former police officers who are watching this or corrections officers and can explain that protocol, or at least in the state of Arkansas. But, yeah, just this shows how important it is to treat everyone as a human being. She lost her rights because she went to prison. However, how much rights should she have lost? And the fact that she was devalued as a human being, especially when she was pregnant and after she gave birth, it's like, why? Why? Yeah, she made mistakes and she lived up to those mistakes and she's in prison. For those mistakes, what more do you want out of her? And Jessica, if you're watching this, my heart just breaks for you. I'm just sounding like a broken track record because I'm still trying to process all of this. Thank you, Mama Jones, again. Very interesting. One thing I don't exactly understand when it comes to the um, medical side is the uh, epidural part. I don't exactly understand how epidural works, so I don't exactly understand that part. And then I don't get the part with the uh, bleeding. Maybe that's just me not understanding, uh, you know, I've never been pregnant or never been in labor, so... I don't know, like, how a woman could bleed, etc., but, yeah, if someone could explain that, that would be very helpful, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day, everyone.